I'm going to show you how I fix an original Xbox One power supply. Before I get started, I want to mention this video is for entertainment purposes only. If you try to open up your power supply, I am not responsible if you blow something up or hurt yourself. All right, I have the supply here and I just wanna mention there is a 200 volt cap here and another one right here. This is carrying a lot of voltage and a lot of current and it's not the voltage that kills you, it is the current or the amps that kills you. I'm pretty sure 500 milliamps is enough to kill you. Please, please, please do not attempt this repair yourself unless you are a professional. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, the first cap that I usually check, there's a couple of capacitors here. There's a bulk of three and it's on the output of the circuit. And as you can see, these capacitors are bulged up. If your capacitors are bulged like this, generally it means that these are bad. The caps that usually get bulged on these supplies that I've noticed from my experience are these three here that are on the output for the supply. And then there's a capacitor right here that usually gets bulged. So we're gonna have to replace these three right here. I worked on a supply recently where a MOSFET, and this one in specific, had failed. And yeah, this supply is pretty dusty, so we're gonna have to clean this out as well. Let's go ahead and replace these three capacitors. So the first thing we gotta do is we got to desolder the shield here. So you just take my solder in with a little bit of flux, heat it up, push up on the shield while desoldering it. That should be good. Now I have a cool trick here where you can put a little plastic pick under here to give some pressure while you are heating up this joint right here. There we go, perfect. We're gonna just gonna put some flux down here for these joints. Now I've gotten a pair of these hemostats here. It's got serrated teeth on it. And what we can do is we can flip the supply on its side, grab a hold of one of the capacitors here, and then at the same time, we can heat up the joints with our iron and pull it right out. I like to do this if you don't have a desoldering tool. Uh, I do not have one currently. But it just works out perfectly. There's one cap. There's two caps. I'm going to try to free up this cap here because it's got that silicone stuff stuck to it. All right, our cap is free. Let's pull it out. Perfect. Now all three capacitors are removed. Now I'm gonna say a quick word about capacitors. This is a 16 volt capacitor. What they do from the factory is, if that rail supports maybe 12 volts, which it probably does, this cap is basically almost running its entire life at 100%. That means this cap is not going to run for very long. It's always good to put a higher voltage capacitor in because the companies that manufacture these want these to run just outside the warranty period and then fail. We don't want that to fail again, so let's put a higher voltage cap in. Now I wanna mention the microfarads do matter, but you can do plus or minus on this value um, a little bit. I don't believe I have exactly 2200 microfarads uh, in stock, so let me go see what I have and and we'll put something in. This video is sponsored by Next PCB. Whether you want to build a TSOP NAND reader for your PS3 or you want to build a flight controller for your drone, it's as simple as selecting your layers, your dimensions, and your quantity and getting an instant quote right away. Or you have the option to upload a Gerber file. New customers get $100 off coupons. Try out Next PCB. Link will be down in the description. Now the caps I'll be using will be a thousand microfarads at 25 volts. This will work perfect for the supply and it will last a very long time. Now before we install these capacitors, it's probably a good idea to reflow some of these joints here and get rid of the excess solder. Perfect. I'm gonna probably take a little bit of alcohol here and just clean up this area real fast. Perfect. Now, making sure that I put the negative side where the negative side goes, I can just push these caps right into the board. All right. I'm gonna hold these with my thumb briefly. All right, so now let's flow these joints here. Okay, there's one. Two, three, oh, I had to use my finger there to push the cap back up because it kind of fell through when I soldered that joint there. All right, now we are all good here. Should be able to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, put it all in this area here, 
and take a brush and just sort of clean and get rid of that flux there. Take a look here. Our joints look amazing. So before we put this power supply back together, I'm gonna clean this thing out. As you can see, it is not looking healthy. So I'm gonna clean this out, put it back together, and we'll give it a test. Last but not least, we cannot forget the metal shield that needs to be soldered back in. Add a little bit of solder there, flow it, wait for it to cool. All right, there it is, perfect. Now this side. A little bit of solder into this. Let it cool. Boom. It's done. Ready to put it back together. All right. So I have an Xbox One here, and I got the power supply. Let's go ahead and plug it in. We're looking for an orange light, and there is an orange light, which is great. Then we go ahead and plug this in. We should see this go to white, which it's a very dim white, but it is there, and that is great. Now we can turn it on. Perfect. It is powering on. Could you believe that three bulge capacitors could have caused this whole Xbox to not turn on? Absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you like this video, I have another video where I fix and diagnose an Xbox One X that has no video. Now, while you're enjoying that, I'm gonna get back to fixing stuff. All right, let's take a look here. All right, it looks like I found the problem here. It's this chip right here. If you haven't already, consider subscribing.